Hello everybody and welcome to Heartlight Vedic Astrology. In today's talk I was going to talk about Samkranti or the sun changing signs in Muhurta, also known as auspicious timing. And this is all from a Vedic Astrology or Jyotish perspective, so keep that in mind. So uh, you may not be familiar with these terms, so what is Muhurta and what is Samkranti? Uh, Muhurta is also known as electional astrology and this is where you um, basically are assessing the, the placements of planets and stars and their conditions and that sort of thing to choose an auspicious time to begin a new activity. So you can kind of think of this as like trying to align with the positive energy of the stars or the positive energy of nature. Yeah. Um, so you can do this to the extent that we one can exert free will. So um, I have another video, excuse me, called uh, Types of Karma and How They Relate to Vedic Astrology. And in that video, I talk about the concept of agama karma, which is like intention setting. So by having good intention, that can shift to some degree, um, potentially, the outcome of, of a specific event. So it's kind of like, again, if you're, um, if you're starting a new activity and you want it to go as well as possible, then using Mahorta electional astrology to choose an auspicious date would potentially be very helpful. Now, the thing to note, though, is that you can only alter the outcome of a situation or the beginning of activity depending, uh, mostly depending on the natal chart. Okay. So if there's a lot of dread karma or what we call fixed karma in a particular direction that's showing somebody's destiny pattern, then you may not be able to, you know, tweak the outcome. Yeah. Um, but if there's, you know, a, a lot of open space where it could go either way, then maybe the mohurta would have like a more influence in terms of a positive outcome. Okay, so typically Mohorta is, is done with especially big life events like marriages and uh, building or starting or moving into a new house or traveling to a new place, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's Mohorta. So if we're talking about Samkranti now, um, Samkranti is when the sun enters a new constellation or Rashi. And this is important, um, one, because it's destabilizing energy. Whenever you're shifting signs of a planet, it's going to destabilize that planet. The other thing is that the sun is literally not only the center of our universe, the center of Jyotish. Because a lot of um, the conditions of other planets depends on the condition of the sun. Uh, because again, in Vedic astrology, you know, it's uh, ancient Indian astrology, it's more than 5,000 years old. And it was developed before we had any technology to, you know, measure the stars and that sort of thing. So a lot of it was dependent on what we could observe in the sky. So the things that we could observe in the sky had a lot of light, and that light was coming from the sun. So that's why in Vedic astrology, we typically see the sun as kind of the center of things, because even very powerful planets like um, a full moon or a retrograde Jupiter or something like that, or um, that sort of thing, even though they have a lot of light, at a certain period of time when they're transiting certain spaces, that light is ultimately coming from the sun. Okay. So um, when we're talking about some Kranti here, uh, there's an important kind of period of time called Punyakala. Punyakala you can translate loosely as sacred time. So this is going to be 16 gatis before and after ingress. So ingress is moving into a new sign. So 16 gatis uh, translates or calculates to 6 hours and 24 minutes. Okay. Now, what, what is a gati? If you've never heard of that, like where does it come from, that sort of thing. So you can see on the last line here, uh, you know, typically, you know, in modern, modern times now, um, we think about a day, a solar day, as having 24 hours. And within those 20, each, 20, each of the 24 hours has 60 minutes. So gatis is, is kind of the reverse of that, where you have 60 gatis within a day, and each gati is 24 minutes. So you can do the math either way, either 24 hours by 60 minutes or 60 gatis by 24 minutes. So one gati is equivalent to 24 minutes. Okay. So if you do 16 gatis uh, by 24 minutes, you get 6 hours and 24 minutes, so about 6 and a half hours. That's a punya kala time. Now, during the Punyakala time, uh, you want to avoid auspicious elections. Um, so again, you know, big events, life events, uh, positive events like um, marriage or um, building a house or moving into a house, um, uh, going on pilgrimage, that sort of thing. Um, well, not in this particular case, but 
a major life event or starting a new job. That would be a better example. Um, but the punya kala time is actually um, good for um, doing things like donations, prayers, havans, uh, which is like a fire ceremony or other spiritual activities. Okay, so that's some karanti and punya kala specifically or the sacred time um, uh, surrounding uh, the um, time of, of, of the sun moving uh, constellations. Okay, so um, this slide is kind of giving a kind of a more of a basic overview of some Kranti and Mohorta. And you'll see from this that um, the way that you observe uh, the Punya Kala, right, the 16 Gatis on either side of some Kranti potentially, is very dependable on which sign the sun is moving into. Okay, so here we have uh, just again basics here. Um, when the sun enters particular signs, and uh, the first ones we're going to look at are the movable signs, so the Chara Rashis, and the Chara Rashis are 1, 4, 7, and 10, so Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Now you can see that the movable signs is, is kind of um, nuanced here, and I, I believe, I'm guessing, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing the reason why is that uh, when the sun is transiting these points, like Aries, Libra, Cancer, Capricorn, those are those are essentially very similar to summer solstice, winter solstice, and fall and spring equinox. So those are major, like literally major turning points for the sun, when the sun is at its weakest, when the sun is at its strongest, and when the sun is uh, balanced with the moon. Okay. So if we look at Aries, Mesha, um, or Libra, or Tula, so first and seventh uh, constellations of the zodiac. Uh, when the sun is moving into these constellations, it's called Vishuva, which translates as equinox, which again, the sun tra uh, transits into Aries um, about you know, in the springtime. So around the spring equinox and sun transits into Libra in the fall, so fall equinox. Mm -hmm. The other thing to know is I think these signs are also important because sun is exalted in Aries and it's debilitated in Libra. Okay, so that's that might also be part of why this this is the way it is. These rules are set up. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing. Um, then uh, we have a Sun moving into Cancer, Karka, the fourth constellation of the zodiac, and that's called Yam Yaya. Okay, and that's translated as Winter Solstice, which may sound funny because usually when Sun is transiting into Cancer, at least in the northern hemisphere, that's when um, you know it's summertime for us. <laughs> you know it's uh, but the thing is that um, the beginning of this period uh, is the movement from summer solstice to winter solstice. Okay, so uh, even though the sun is kind of at its highest when it moves into Cancer, once it gets into Cancer, it's like in a slow decline. You can kind of think of summer solstice as like high noon, when the sun is like right up above and shining everywhere. Um, so it's kind of like that. So the, the terminology seems a little bit contradictory, but, you know, if you think of summer solstice as the beginning of, you know, the sun uh, sort of getting weaker, then it makes sense. Okay, then we have sun entry Capricorn or Makara. This is the 10th constellation of the zodiac, and this time is called Saumyayan. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't find a very good translation of this, um, but there were some words like fasting, quiet, purity, moon, um, so again, I think that time when uh, sun is moving into Capricorn, you know, this is around winter solstice time. And so, you know, just naturally, you know, even birds and the trees and animals and stuff like that hibernate. So maybe that's why this, this word is used for when sun specifically enters Capricorn. Okay, then we have the fixed signs. So the Shtira Rashi, so this is the second, fifth, eighth, and eleventh uh, constellation of the zodiac. So Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and uh, Aquarius. So when the sun enters these signs, uh, any of these signs, it's called Vishnupada, which translates as uh, Vishnu's feet. And again, I, I was getting, uh, I didn't get um, beyond Vishnu's feet, I wasn't getting other great translations. But I was getting uh, words like sky, sea of milk, lotus, the Ganges. So again, you can see there's all these like spirit, deeply spiritual connotations and lofty connotations here with this. Okay. 
And then the dual signs, when the sun crosses into dual signs, or Gospa Bavarashis, so 3, 6, 9, and 12, uh, 12th constellation is the zodiac, so that's, that uh, is Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. These are called Shachidyanam. And the only translation I found was 68. So for me, that's just a big question mark. I don't know what that refers to. But that's what I found. So maybe that's not even a good translation, but that's what I found. Okay. So anyway, um, just in this slide, uh, you know, um, I've been talking about like different constellations, Rashis and the Rashi categories, like fixed and dual. Um, and so planet exaltation, debilitation. So if those are all new concepts to you, I do have videos on all these if you'd like to you know, learn more or review those, okay? So now let's get into more specific rules about um, some kranti and observing the punya kala. Okay, so let's lo start looking at like specific rules, um, you know, or you know, general um, thoughts about some kranti. And what you want to know, first of all, is like, does the some kranti happen at night or during the day? And we define night and day by night is, um, sunset to sunrise and day is sunrise to sunset yeah. so um and you'll see here is that we're going to mix up uh, which uh, you know combine which sign the sun is entering and whether it's happening at day or night so this slide is all about when some crunchy is happening at night so again between sunset and sunrise okay and the next slide is going to be on rules of some crunchy during the day okay so let's start here, and you can see the first bit is kind of the most complicated bit. It involves the signs of Cancer and Capricorn. So when Sun enters Cancer and Capricorn. So again, like the previous slides, Cancer and Capricorn have been exceptions because those are the two probably biggest turning points for the Sun. So because essentially they relate to summer solstice thereabouts and winter solstice. So when the Sun is the strongest and when the Sun is the weakest. Okay. So let's look at if sun enters Cancer or Karka, as it's known as in, in Sanskrit, at nighttime, you would observe the Punya Kala, so that's six hours and 24 minutes, on the second half of the previous day, so before the sun switches signs. Okay. Now in contrast, if the sun enters Capricorn, or Makra, as it's known as in Sanskrit, during nighttime, then you observe Punya Kala on the first half of the next day, so after the sun crosses signs. So again, that's gonna be six hours and 24 minutes, okay? Now, um, there's an exception to this, you know, entering Cancer or Capricorn at night situation. So there's another period of time called Sandhya Kala. Sandhya means like a joint junction point, which is usually, again, junctions are yeah. potentially times or points of weakness uh, in Vedic astrology. So during the three gatis, which is equivalent to one hour and 12 minutes before sunrise or after sunset, so we're still talking nighttime, but when we're getting really close, about within an hour of sunrise or within an hour of sunset, you know, those are junction points because, we're you know, it's a twilight time. It's not like completely dark, but it's not completely light. So it's a little bit, you know, confusing. It's a transition time. So if the sun enters Capricorn, Three gant three gatis after sunset. Okay, so entering Capricorn just a little bit after sunset, within about an hour after sunset. Then you observe Punya Kala on the second half of the previous day, so before the sun transits the Capricorn. And that's a direct contrast to um, other times during the night. You would observe Punya Kala after the sun crosses into Capricorn. Okay. Then if the sun enters Cancer, three gatis, about an hour and 12 minutes before sunrise. So if, if you're entering Cancer close to sunrise, almost before the sun rises, then you want to observe Punya Kala on the first half of the next day. So right after the sun switches into Cancer, then you would observe Punya Kala. Okay, so the first half of the slide is all about Cancer and Capricorn at night and the exceptions there, because that's, you know, it's, it's a little bit tricky there. Okay, then if we look at the second half of the slide, if the sun enters other signs, so all the other signs, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, so any other sign except Cancer or Capricorn, after sunset, but before midnight, so now midnight's an important, you know, time marker here, 
you would observe Punyakala the second half of the previous day, so before uh, the sun switches signs. Okay. If the sun enters these other 10 signs after midnight but before sunrise, so from the second half of night, kind of think about it that way, um, Punyakala is observed on the first half of the next day. So you observe the Punyakala, the 6 hours and 24 minutes of sacred time after uh, the sun crosses signs. Okay, so for all the other signs besides Cancer or Capricorn, you have to know, again, if this is all happening at night, does the sun enter the new sign before midnight or after midnight? Okay, then, uh, you know, probably very rarely, the sun enters a new sign, any of these new signs, at exactly midnight. When that happens, you want to observe Punyakala or on both the second half of the previous day and the first half of the next day. So then you're going to be observing Punyakala for 12 hours and 48 minutes total. Got it? So Cancer and Capricorn exceptions, especially when they're close to sunrise or sunset. And the other signs you have to know, is it before, again, this is all during night, before midnight, after midnight, or exactly at midnight, to figure out which way you observe the Punyakala. Okay? Okay, so now we're going to talk about rules for some Kranti during day in Mahorta. Now, this is much easier <laughs> you can see already. So, so, Aries and Libra are the exceptions during the day. So, if the sun enters Aries, Mesha as it's known as in Sanskrit, or Libra, Tula as it's known as in Sanskrit, you observe Punyakala eight gatis, so three hours and 12 minutes before, and eight gatis after some Kranti. So, you kind of split your Punyakala time for and after. Okay. And again, these are going to be related to the equinoxes, right? Spring equinox and um, uh, fall equinox. So that's also important to remember because, again, it's like the rules switch, you know, uh, summer solstice, winter solstice, and the equinoxes. Okay. Now, if sun enters uh, 2, 4, 5, 8, or 11 number signs, so that's all the fixed signs, right, 2, 5, 8, and 11, so Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, and Cancer, so again, this is daytime, you observe the Punyakala uh, on the second half of the previous day, so before the sun enters these signs. Okay, you observe the Punyakala of 6 hours and 24 minutes. If the sun enters 3, 6, 9, 10, or 12, so that's all the dual signs plus Capricorn, during the day, then you observe the Punyakala on the first half of the next day, so after the sun crosses. And again, that's 16 gatis or 6 hours and 24 minutes. So the daytime rules are simpler than the nighttime rules. Okay. So, um, you know, again, just a very simple process when you're thinking about Sankranti, if you're using it as more horta, is one, one is, does Sankranti happen during the day or during the night? And then two, which sign or Rashi is entering? Because those two things are the main um, things to consider in terms of which which time to um, observe the Punyakala before, um, after, or you split it, or you know, again, if the sun crosses at midnight, it's like it's like a double Punyakala actually. Okay. Um, and then if it does happen at night, you want to differentiate like which time interval of night. So does it happen? between sunset to midnight? Does it happen, you know, um, after midnight, uh, before sunrise? Or does it happen exactly at midnight? Because those time, you know, markers are critical. And then for Capricorn and Cancer, there's even more nuance. So if uh, the sun crosses Capricorn at night, does it you know, transit three gatis or an hour and 12 minutes after sunset? And for Cancer, uh, some Kranti at night, does the sun cross into Cancer three gatis or an hour and 12 minutes before sunrise? Okay. So, uh, and the whole reason why I, I, um, I was inspired, I think, to do this video is because we actually have a Sankranti that just uh, occurred today, uh, May 14, 2024. So today, uh, the sun moved into Taurus or Vrishaba. Okay, so now you know the sign. Now, did it happen during the day or during the evening? Well, my time, it happened 8.24 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so it was during the day, okay? So, um, uh, for fixed signs, uh, when you have some Kranti during the day, you observe the Punyakala on the second half of the previous day, 
So observe that, uh, was it six hours and 24 minutes before 8.24 a.m. That would be the time to observe the uh, punya kala. Okay, so if you don't know the exact times, you know, uh, sunrise, sunset, you know, midnight, well, midnight, you would know, potentially if you had a watch, um, sunrise, sunset, you know, that sort of thing. Um, to be safe in general, you can observe uh, when you call on, on both sides of any synchronity to kind of cover your bases. <laughs> so so if, you, if you don't have the time or energy or uh, exact times to know exactly, you can observe um, Punyakala six hours and 24 minutes or 16 gatis uh, on both sides, and then you're covered, essentially. Alrighty, so there you go. Um, more auspicious timing for you with the technology. So as always, I want to thank you for stopping by and listening to one of my talk. Um, all of my teaching videos on the subject of video, uh, Vedic astrology are in my concepts playlist. They can all be found there. Um, if you like to study birth charts, I have a list of all the birth charts I've analyzed of famous people, places, and moments in time. Um, I have a video on that called uh, Birth Charts Archive List 2024. So if you're looking for birth charts to um, study, uh, you can watch that video and see the list of birth charts that I've analyzed and the video you can find them in because you won't know. Like sometimes, like when I do my monthly video, I'll analyze two or three famous charts and you won't know from the title that there are famous charts in there to look at. So, um, Also, I do offer individual birth chart readings. You can watch, um, I do those live on Zoom, or I do them by recorded video, private recorded video. If you're interested in an individual birth chart reading, you can email heartlightastroyahoo.com. I do have another YouTube channel on natural medicine, where I cover other Vedic arts, such as Ayurveda and yoga, as well as other paradigms of natural medicine, such as homeopathy and naturopathic medicine. And the name of that channel is called Nature Source Care. So that's out there too, if that's uh, helpful to you. So as always, I hope these talks are helpful, useful, and interesting to you as you learn to navigate the energy cycles of your own life. All right. So until the next one, you take care. Namaste.